This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Uh, first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from November 26, 2018. Make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thanks. Uh, I'm kind of going kind of out of order. We'll, um, we had discussions last time about the commissioning of the building and, and what we need to, you know, we need to recommission and what the story was. So we have. Uh, our commissioning agent here. Yep, Adam Gower from uh, BBH. I asked him to join us since we've been talking about commissioning so much, thought it might be worthwhile to have him uh, stop in and say hello and, and kind of talk about the just the general commissioning process if anybody has any questions from Adam, because Adam was in the field uh, for pretty much the entire project. So he did all our, our field reports um, with that. But with respect to, um, you know, we're talking about the gems. Um, you know, let Adam opine on the operation of those. And basically, the, the, the repairs were repairs, the warrants. Pretty straightforward uh, warranty repairs on some of the parts, and Kerry can opine in the, the exact ones. But um, from what I recall, we, um, those, those systems were fully commissioned uh, in the gym. Adam, I don't know if you can opine a little further, give us a little more insight on those. Sure, the gym units were commissioned by us. Some outstanding items may rely on the commission portal still from that, uh, but all in all, they were they were commissioned. Actually, numerous times went back there for those. Uh, I think just recently, the engineer had uh, commented to add um, condensate sensors in the, in the paint drain pans there to shut down the fans um, when excess condensate is in the pan, which is great. Uh, feature to have when you have expensive wood floors that uh, could get water damage. So that may be something that that could be commissioned. But other than that, it's the still. But other than that, the warranty piece parts and pieces that were were brought in were for the refrigerant side. What I'm hearing, uh, condensing units. Otherwise, I commissioned the whole building from the beginning. Um, design phase reviews early on in the process before it went out for bidding and all the way through construction we would do random site visits and issue field reports and then functional testing we go through all the systems HVAC electrical uh, plumbing and fire protection part of the connect high performance process and then uh, any issues be fine we have a running punch list we call it a portal uh, it's still live right now and you know there's pictures associated with a lot of the items Building envelope is also a, an item we, we commission look at. Um, we issued a fi final report already, and we still have to do the submission any time now to connect to the state. I owe you a couple um, items from the owner's side. <coughs> you look at the filters you. in the in the units. Yes. Okay, so we're, we've been told that the filters may not be properly sized in uh, many of the. Uh, I don't know if it's the air handlers or, or what it may be. So did you, if you looked at those, what did you see? Yeah, they were one inch and two inch. I did find that. Um, I'm sorry, so what does that mean? I understand there's a difference between one inch and two way. inch, but what, what does that mean relative to what you found? Uh, we found some better than what was required, so we didn't raise an issue to those. Um, the two inch is better than the one inch, and but really the submittal called for one inch. And the... The engineering manual for the filter unit says it can accept one inch and two inch. So I think this was in the, if, I, if I'm correct, in the, the classroom units, the VRF units. Yes, the LG units. The ones that I think Phil Diana had reported on that they were... Um, Too small, he said. Yeah. Not properly sized. It made it seem as if they didn't fit in the slot in which they're designated to go. That's what Phil reported. and, and we went back and, and looked, and that's these are the ones that Adams refer to that they're they're made to accommodate both the one and the two inch. The two inch being, I think, a finer filter, Adam, mm -hmm. uh, a, a higher level than what's required for the specification uh, for that. And I know, um, I think mean, Carrie, you know, Carrie and MG Daly did go out and, and did some review, and I think we're going to meet with Phil on what our findings were. Yes. So in between last meeting and this meeting, um, MG Daly, there was a. a 
site observation report. Um, so the condition, they spot checked um, a handful of units, ones that had not been uh, previously touched by Phil. They documented the condition and uh, we need to have a follow up meeting with the school and Gary and Chuck. There could be some unique cases out there because I functionally tested 50% of terminal units. I think I was contracted for. Um, I'm pretty sure I did above my first sampling percentage of the 50%. I'm not sure exactly the percentage I did. So there, there are some out there that I didn't put eyes on uh, internally. So with the 1% versus the 2, or the 1 inch versus the 2 inch, um, possibly be the reasoning that some of the coils are really clogged and dirty because the two inch ones were, were better ones and you don't didn't see as much of that in the ones that had the two inch in them? Um, we didn't find any ones that had the two inch um, filters in them. So um, we're only observing the one inch. Um, and the ones that you observed were also very um, dirty? Yeah, yes. The other item is that um, the, um, I lost my train of thought, but the one inch filters um, were are the original installed one inch filters. So what would have been the time frame that they should have been replaced anyway? So is, is it maybe that they are beyond the time that they should have already been replaced? That's really why we need to sit and talk with um, review the conditions report and sit talk with Phil and, and see what has been done to the system since since we turned it over. So, and, and, and on those, I think, and, and we, uh, Adam went back and looked through his report. Oh, I remember oh. what I was going to say. The point I was going to say. <laughs> um, the one-inch filters, we did confirm that the one-inch filters provided by MG Daily were um, the manufacturer manufacturer's best five recommended filter size. And, and um, so they did, it, they did match up. It wasn't a case that they provided the wrong filters. Um, so now it just gets into the conversation of what has happened to the filters and, and why are they in the position that they're in. Sounds like we need more information before we can yes. give Okay. Yeah, and I was just going to say, Adam, and, uh, sorry, in, in construction, he, he did notice on a report during the installation of the units um, that for uh, there was a period where the, the, the I'll say the, the sacrificial filters during construction weren't up, and he, he made note to the contractor they did install those because they're temporary filters for the construction dust uh, for and that. But all that those was, were removed <coughs> and replaced. We did a full filter change before we yeah, started building. So. I also did note on the commission portal, one of the items uh, early on, the units were running with no filtration at all for some time. And I think as soon as Gilbane caught wind of that, it, it was quick to install filters. Yeah, that's what I was referring yeah. to. They, it wasn't there prior, uh, previously, and then they got installed. So. Well, what period of time did it run without filters? A week, a month, how long? Is that the reason why the the filters were excessively clogged because there was no filter in there for an extended period of time? Or? No, they would have, so Adam would have gone through and checked them. So how long did they have no filters in them? Hard to tell when they're going through startup and we're going through commissioning all at the same time, so. Is this throughout the building or just new section? Or the, the new section. But at some point when construction was completed, new filters were put in. And we were good to go. We mm -hmm. just aren't sure why they got so dirty. Okay. Well, the filters have, are not in their correct location or the correct position within the filter box currently. Well, they're not. No. Not in there. So it's not. It's not just a matter of the filters. The filters are there, and the coils are are. They're not protecting the coil. It's the fact that the the filter is fall into another location within the filter box and it's no longer protecting the coil. Oh, uh, it's so getting bypassed. Okay. It's getting bypassed. It's like having a no it's like having no filter altogether. So is it possible that one inch was spec and it shouldn't have been? They all should have been two? No. no. The manufacturer has gives you the option for multiple um, filter types to be used in their filter box. So when it was installed, it wasn't installed in the right track? Is it, that right? Well or whatever. We know that it currently is not installed correctly. Correct. We're not sure how that happened. And how, so but is the correct filter. Them out. 
or huh? they got put in wrong. Either I, our people changed them out incorrectly, or they got put in incorrectly. Or there's there's something about the way that the filter box holds the filter that allows it to fall out of position mm -hmm. through the operation of the unit. I often see them fall out of their track or get sucked through their channels because they get excessively dirty and the pressure drop just it creates more in, pressure and yeah, will fold harder. in uh, and yep. get sucked in. So you change them maybe more frequently. They they won't get excessively dirty, but there are, there's avenues you can take to if you have the problem still, even with clean filters getting sucked in, whether or not they get moisture, then they're more apt to get sucked in as well. So there's you know, supports, you've added supports you can put in. Mm -hmm. um, there's different types of filters you can buy that have additional supports as well built into the filter itself. <coughs> but there's some recommended three month changeover for these filters, no matter what. Yeah, I think in the first round of um, use, it's recommended you know keep an eye on them so you can get a level of comfort as for how often you have to change it because it all depends on the application, how much dust is in the in the classrooms. Um, occupancy. Yeah. Occupancy. So, yeah. so this could be a maintenance issue that we're talking about. It's a dirty filter that's yeah. being pulled away from its track, then that's a, a, re, re, a maintenance. We went, went to repair it, but went to replace those filters. So the conversation needs to have it there. There's, I mean, I'm sure Phil has documentation of filter changes on all of his equipment. So we'll just need to review that piece before we wholly say that it's a, yeah. a, a warranty issue. Does it, does it? Or an installation issue. Does it appear that it's that condition? <coughs> I'm talking about where it's actually sucking it in, or is it just out of place in the... No, it's actually sucking it oh, okay. in. okay. So can we just look at the track and make sure that the track is appropriate for the filter? If there's something wrong with the track and we have to add some type of support to the track so that the filters don't get sucked in? I mean, maybe it's just a little ridge and it passes under it. Maybe we need something more, you know, well, substantial. It, it sounds like it's the filter material itself. Yeah, the track's part of the unit itself. Yeah, it's a filter mistaken. box. <clears throat> It's, it's part of the actual manufactured unit. Um, <coughs> for us, it's probably how it comes from the factory, I'd imagine. The filter track. I change out. my filters twice a year. They don't slide out of the track, so something's got to get looked at. So this doesn't twice keep a year. happening. Yeah. Twice a year with the clock change. Yes, yeah, so that's what we just going to forward. <laughs> it's it's not going to fall back. Put the mic on this project. There we go. I'm going to change my batteries and my filters twice a year. There you go. So yeah, I, it, like I said, we're going to follow up with Phil Diana. Um, there are O and M manuals that we had in the training. Maybe it's just a matter of revisiting those, and and if uh, you know, it may be a matter of up in the frequency <clears throat> from what's recommended based upon occupancy. So well. one of the questions that came up uh, at the last meeting was, do we need to recommission after these repairs are made? And if that's the clarification we just want to make here today. Um, we had a discussion uh, last week and. Um, the, if you repair something and return it back to its original performance, there's no need to recommission. It's basically the bottom line, right? That's, that's what we're kind of discussing about that. Um, Sounds good to me. <laughs> Plus, yeah. Well, but we typically will commission a whole system for warranty repair. Um, that that when it, you know, once it's commissioned, it's in, it's in service. There's going to be issues that come up that are maybe under warranty that have to be repaired, but wouldn't necessarily constitute a full recommission of, of that system unless requested. If the performance after repair was different, then we would we might have to do something. But if you're just repairing it to back to its original condition, yeah. If there's something to build on. If, if, if Phil was seeing something in, in the building automation system that was uh, awry, that wasn't uh, performing. Uh, as before, but it's a matter of who's looking at it and comparing it to the, um, the you know, uh, the, the commission information, how it was originally, mm -hmm. and comparing those two. So um, I, I think to, <clears throat> because there's a warranty issue, to simply state that it's not performing as it was before, <coughs> that I think that would be a hard statement to, to make on that. Um, the warranty begin when the commissioning concludes? Is that how this works? When, the, when, the, when the, the units are put in service and there's beneficial use by the owner for those, that's 
essentially when, when the warranty starts on. So then what is the significance of the commissioning? Uh, the, the commissioning um, one, and Adam can opine on it, is to ensure it was installed correctly, started up correctly, and that it's performing correctly per the, per the contract documents. Um, once it's up and started <clears throat> uh, by third parties, he's BBH and commission agents, just the third party vendor that's checking. It's like a test, similar to a testing lab for materials. They're just checking to make sure what's installed is per the plans and, uh, and specifications. Hope I clarified that. I also came and did a warranty review during each phase. The 10 month. The 10 month before your one year was up. And, and Kick the tires of uh, as many systems as I could. So, like I said, I did sampling percentages. So, during functional testing and on the warranty review phase, I was cognizant of what units I did and the percentage. And on the warranty side phase, I went to units I didn't do during the functional testing. So that way, you kind of got more uh, eyes on more than just the 50% of the terminal units. We were contracted to do 100% of the, the big things, air handling units, boiler plant, things like that. All those are, but when we say terminal, can you clarify you know, just for the, commit, the committee, terminal units? Terminal units are the classroom fan coil units with the filters, um, the VRF, the evaporators and the ceilings of the admin area, um, and VAVs. If you had any of those, oh, you do have some of those um, in the, um, the D wing. But and then I just wanted to touch base on the gym air handling units and the replacement that you got done. I think it's on the cooling side, so you wouldn't be able to really see prove that out until spring. Mm -hmm. Did you find any warranty issues on your 10 month inspection? And in each phase, a lot. Multiple, multiple pages. I don't know how I meant, and it all. All the issues throughout the whole project, for me, are tracked on the portal. So yep. I don't know how many total items we had come across, but there were hundreds. Hmm. And there's a total of uh, 500 and over 500, you know, com you know, comments and items that VVH found that we in, in a lot of these items during each phase uh, we had you know, meetings in the field with VVH and Gilbane and the team. Uh, to review these, There's, there are some that are um, outstanding, mostly in, in ours that got assigned to us as a follow-up more so than anything else. Um, these are checked as, as we went through each of the phases. Another thing about your, your roof to your handling units for the gym is that the good thing is that you have a, a controls company that you use throughout town and it's like mm. they're, they're a good contract for you, yeah. I think, so, um, so that That'll be a good resource as far as verifying whatever corrections were made. Okay, good. All right, any other questions? Did you zero those out, Chuck, those 500 issues? No, they haven't been zeroed out. We, we do have some follow-up on, on, not all, a lot of them have been zeroed out, um, but there are, there is a couple pages of, of follow-up items that are were put in our court that we don't normally have too many. I, I have to follow-up on them. It's just they're put in our court. We're, it's usually a contractor or a, a design issue, so we're following up on those more verification with the owner verifying with Phil uh, on some issues. Is that a reasonable number of things that you'd find in a project this size? Is that more or less the average? I think that's average. I think that's around average. So nothing on that list that stands out to you as a problem? A significant problem? A red flag? He's trying to remember all the I'm things. trying to remember all the <laughs> As far as the, I guess nothing, <laughs> nothing comes to mind then. Um, <coughs> no, nothing I can think of. And what's left to do from your from your perspective, your job? If they wanted me to re-verify any of the uh, remaining items that are open, or if you wanted me to functionally test those condensate sensors once they're installed. Other than that, I don't think anything is left. Now, you mentioned you have to uh, submit the, the job to the state for uh, the, the final report. Um, what, what is entailed in that? So we have to use our PE stamp on, on that submission. And they have us signing off on a lot of things that we don't even commission. 
um, the way the state can I get performance billing. So in order for us to get over that, we have affidavits for the team members to sign in order to say that their pieces were confirmed on their end. Like so, for example, a bike rack was installed. Well, we don't. We're not commissioning that and making sure that's our certain garbage can recycling was done. So we'll have, for example, for Joe, Joe architect would um, would sign that affidavit and that would cover that piece of it. So we have the construction manager, colliers, and even one for the town. That way we package all those affidavits along with the stuff we commission, put our stamp on it, and send it off to the state. Might be some <coughs> renewable energy is typically purchase of renewable energy source is typically been one in Connecticut High Performance. Yeah, yeah, we, we do. We are supposed to commission any renewable energy sources. Or even just that the town is some that there's one that the, the town is purchasing from a renewable energy source, so it's confirmed with <laughs> fill in the town. Yes, you are, and it, it's it's a yes. simple letter that we can get to Adam. So that's not something we would commission, right? Yeah, so. correct. Is this, is this just a requirement, or is it something we have a, can receive a benefit for? It's a, it's some of them, when we go through Connecticut High Performance, there's a minimum amount of points required to meet the Connecticut High Performance, which is the Silver Lead sort of uh, equivalent. Okay. And the, these are there's certain ones that are required to meet the... And I hope you find it beneficial as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, the whole Hopefully. process is too. But, uh, you know, they, they want to be, uh, um, you know, bike racks, I, I think those are to encourage, you know, bicycling to school and not taking buses probably and, and uh, you know, the recycling, et cetera. Some of them used to be walk-off mats, uh, yeah. you know, things that you wouldn't necessarily think in building, um, you know, renewable and sustainability, but uh, they do give credits for certain ones that are not necessarily mechanical or electrical or plumbing uh, in nature on that list. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Very helpful. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Thank Adam. Um, we have a couple of invoices that need to be approved. That we we held the main invoice last meeting. I don't know if we're ready to approve that one now or not. Um. We were talking about removing the daily portion of that. So, I don't want to hold up the rest of the trade contractors. Right. So, I'd be, I'd be willing to, to remove daily's portion until the LG issue, filter mm -hmm. issue, is uh, more clearly defined. Okay. And I agree. I think we should. No, not penalize everybody just for one contract with this issue. Correct. Uh, so what do we do? Is there anything for us to approve today? I think what I would recommend in order to get that process, because we're probably not going to meet in two weeks, no. I'm assuming. Uh, uh, so <clears throat> um, one um, possibility is to, to have Gilbain will remove their portion and re revise the requisition okay. less their release of retainage okay. um, and then it's a matter of if, if the committee's okay with you know we we can check it we can send the EU Gary and, and, and you know maybe Diane just to confirm okay that's been removed yeah. and send it to the town for approval and then that way um, the town can process the payment um, okay have to wait for another um, yeah because you know we have, how many other contractors are involved is probably Oh, right. There's a couple on there. three on there, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is this, before three. we vote on these, was this, we talked about a number of things, I believe that were underneath the umbrella of this one. Was this the nosing, one of the contractors that was in this? No, it's not that. No, what that's about warranty, warranty work? Okay, what about, the, well, this wasn't warranty work, the, the um, floor of the stage that we talked about that, where was that? Did that That's, fall into that, this? No, it's no. totally outside of their contract. Okay. It's with um, the that. separate state contractor okay. coming Because we, we need to discuss that one. So if it's not part of this, I'll hold it. Until sure. Yeah, it's outside of Gilbane's contract. So you want a motion for approval subject to... Uh, no, I think we'll just hold, right? That's, is well, that, well, what's the 
Come on, Chuck. Well, what, what I was, my recommendation would be to um, approve it with the removal of MJ Daly's uh, retainage. The rest of it is fine, just removal of theirs, allowing Gilbane to revise the invoice. Okay. Uh, removing that, otherwise okay. it's going to be probably another month and before we're going to after back. that when we actually <clears throat> see. Yeah, we can confirm it, send it, we can send it yeah, out. That's that's the over what are the vendors right there? Uh, Civitello's on there. There's a couple other vendors on there. Um, I think the fire protection sub is on there. Um, Civitello's on there. Okay. Do those other vendors so, have any other work owed to us? No, those ones are just those ones are their responsibility to the yeah. job? Yeah. yeah. No, we're fine with those, David. This one's just paying yeah. that, so this one's a pretty good. If you if you want to talk about the stage um, while you're doing that, I can recalculate the value of it. So yeah, at least the approximate value. Would be, it's I think, pretty easy. I could just, just taking that out. There's no there's no real multipliers on it. It's just I just sure. remove MJ Daly out of it. All right. Well, yeah. Why don't you do that? Well, yep. instead of going, we have a couple more invoices that we'll have to add onto the agenda. Um, these were, um, Chuck, I'll, I'm going to start over here. These, are, these were during the uh, reconciliation with the town. These were yeah, so last week we reconciled with Ed and, and his team over town um, uh, in the finance department. It was a very good reconciliation. We had very few. Um, the last time we had reconciled, I think, was in the summer of 2017, so it's been a while. Um, it was a very good reconciliation. Uh, we had two invoices that they've paid. Um, that uh, Gary's referring to that uh, weren't um, either approved or we didn't have them. It was one from Facility Support Services. That's the stormwater monitor. It was the month of May for 2017. We, uh, we, we didn't have that in our records. We found it pretty easily. And then one was for Red Thread. That was for chairs um, in the custodial room that I think we had. There was a discussion, but it was never formally approved. However, they did pay it. Um, other than that, the reconciliation was very good. We reconciled all of Bain's invoices out, Perkins Eason's invoices out. We reconciled to their books. Um, we went through some of the uh, some of the FF and E vendors and clarified some of those. It was more of just moving invoices into the proper POs, more so than anything else um, uh, for that. And then uh, there was some discussion on uh, with uh, um, WB Mason's got some um, fairly large. Uh, Outs of the amounts on their POs. One of them's got 22,000, talk to Ed, um, and, and what they had originally proposed being W.B. Mason to submit an invoice for the balance. I said, well, that's not gonna work. The committee won't approve just a, a blanket invoice without showing that goods have been received. I don't, I don't necessarily question if they've been received. It's a matter of having the proof from Gilbane and say, yes, these are received for these items. <clears throat> yeah, exactly, and Ed, so we discussed that with Ed, and Ed, Ed was on the same page. That. So it's all in their corp. Overall, the reconciliation went uh, very good. So uh, these two invoices uh, need to add on to the agenda. Remember, we'll start off with the FSS. Um, I'll entertain a motion to add um, FSS invoice 11943 to the agenda in the amount of $1,280. Is there a motion? Make a motion. Is there a second? All in favor? All right, now to vote on the invoice. Um, again, FSS invoice 11943 for $1,280. This is for the month of May of, 2000. May of 2017. It's <coughs> already been paid. Yeah. 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 yeah, they already paid it. Just a, Make a, a motion. formality. formality. Um, uh, um, all in favor? Aye. Wait, aye. Can get a second? Is there a second? A second. second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Okay. The second one is a red thread invoice six five six five nine zero six zero. My understanding for three thousand nine hundred sixty seven dollars and twenty cents. Is there a motion to add that out to the agenda? Make a motion. There's a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Which one was the chairs in the? Uh... This is this is I uh, guess the invoice for chairs that were. Remember we had the. Nice chairs that were in the custodial area. They got switched out to other areas after that was discovered. Purposed. And this is the advice I get, we must have at the time table that's waiting for uh, like further information. Of the chairs. But yeah. um, it then delivered. got slipped through the cracks. Yeah, so I'm just snuck it through. Yeah. Yeah. 
So is there a motion to uh, approve the invoice uh, 659060 for $3,967.20? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. So, Carrie, um, <clears throat> recalculated that invoice, uh, removing MJ Daly's would okay. be uh, $6,236.97. So it's all daily then? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. All right. 6236 Okay. Um, From the 531? Yeah. yeah. 6000 remains? Yeah, 525000 of it was at oh, the really daily. Oh, really? Wow. Really helping those other vendors, huh? Well, part of it is K and M is in there, and we need them to come back and turn back on the sprinkler, <laughs> the vestibule, and you need to pay this invoice, sir. So otherwise, it won't come out. Oh yeah, stuff. All right. So, um, are we gonna have a revised invoice forty? Yes. Okay. Our accountant will forward it over to you guys. Okay. Today. Um, so I will uh, entertain a motion to approve invoice forty. A revised invoice 40 for six thousand two hundred thirty six dollars and ninety seven cents. Is there a motion? There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I thought the whole thing was we like we met purposely because we didn't want to hold that huge invoice to hold up payment and now here it is two weeks and we're holding up again and we're not going to meet in two weeks so how, when do you propose <coughs> the remainder of this, I mean, even if you guys, if it goes through the finance subcommittee, I mean, is that enough, or are you going to need the full vote from us to get it paid for you it? Always to pay need the full, it? always need the full, full committee. committee. But the, especially even on that number. Um, but I think the issue, we, we still really haven't resolved the MJ Daly part of it. I, until, I, I just remember the conversation from two weeks ago, yeah. and here we're going to go now another two weeks beyond, so. My understanding from two weeks ago was we were going to vote on everything but. Was this well, I don't think any of us realized everything but left $6,000. I, I didn't realize price. it was that low either, but it is, so. Okay. We also need to approve the stairs. The what? The stairs. Yes. The ATPLs. Okay. Um, another housekeeping item that I think uh, Chuck was um, found at the, commission, at the uh, reconciliation. Was it uh, the Red Thread PO? Yeah, this this was uh, it's a very small amount. It was a correction to the assistant principal's desk on the second floor, I believe. It was for one hundred eighty-five dollars. It was a minor modification to their desk. I think uh, with Gary authorized. We were in, I think it was one of our OEC meetings in construction. And I think that was authorized to make that mm. uh, change. However, the PO, their their PO that it fell under was never formally voted on and had just asked if we just vote to increase the PO by $185. So. All right, a motion to increase the red thread PO by $185? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Now the, um, so that should be, you know, we're, we're in good shape with that as far as um, any of the uh, matching of your records to their Yeah, no, it was a very good reconciliation given we haven't reconciled in probably 15 months. We were pretty, we were very, very close. We were missing really too much. We found no, whatever we had, we found very easily um, hmm. uh, in that time, so. Okay. All right, uh, change orders. Um, the handrails. Yes. Sorry I didn't send this out. Previous to the meeting, but I didn't make copies for you guys. So you just take one and pass it along, or? Oh, no, no. Everyone gets a pass. I couldn't find my stapler. My kids take my stapler all the time. I think you passed these down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I literally buy a stapler or a quarter and then they just disappear. <laughs> Everyone got one? Yeah. No. No? Yes. All right. Okay. Whoever took the one. So essentially this is uh, just the formalization of the Shepherd Steel quote for the center stair rails and uh, stairs one, two, and three. Um, I believe, Joe, this is to, this is for required for final CO? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, 
There's some painting that needs to happen. I suggest that we do that on time and materials. Um, so this is uh, the primary, the, the brunt of the cost here is $16,625 for Shepherd Steel, and then two allowances, one for painting and one for supervision. I am hard pressed uh, to provide constant supervision over the break, just based on our staffing for, and like, you know, 30% of our staff is on vacation for, for the winter break. But um, we will uh, make sure that the crews get started every day. We'll check in on them and we'll, we'll follow back up at, the, at night to make sure that uh, the area is left clean and that the uh, insulation is going smoothly. Um, we have someone working right in North Haven, so they're going to flop between the two, between the two locations. Um, so. And this is for the Christmas break? The holiday break. This is for between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Um, well, it's a four-day job. Yes. That's, uh, mm -hmm. How many stairways? Three. Three. And they use good paint. Yeah. I'm going to use the revised paint or the uh, the uh, the second paint, not the first paint. Wow. All right. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve ATP 255 for $23,111. Make a motion. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. So they're uh, ready to go, Carrie? Yes. Okay. They're fabricated this week. Yeah. Joe's just got to follow up with a little bit of paperwork to me, and, and we'll be all set. Yeah. I'll only charge you for the hours that they're actually here. It'll be less so than it'll be less than that. So yeah. uh, I see. Those are allowances. Got it. Uh, okay. These are open issues. So let's talk, let's talk about the stage four. That's, so I couldn't remember. We talked about who was doing it. I thought you said that it had been done. Was that true? Nope. Okay, good. It's been done. It's not been done. <laughs> because no. if it was done, then we would have a real issue. It still looks the same. It still looks the same. Yes. The divots were there. It's yeah. a mess. Okay. Has not I just been wanted done. to make sure. Couldn't remember. Didn't have it in my notes. Glad to hear it. When's well, it going to get done? No, we're um, scheduling to do it over the break. That's what we had. The, the, the PO just got cut to them. Okay. So. And that's when they're also fixing the nosing. There was something that, that the nosing went with that. Ty, so the items that are scheduled over winter break are the um, the stair rails for, for Gilbane work. There's the stair rails, there's the the uh, remedy to the tile floor in the lobby, including the nosing. There is the resupporting um, and the repair of the bench. Uh, what about reinforcement of the other benches? And reinforcement of the other benches. So that's already planned. Okay, good. Those are the three items that I have. And I'm going to try and also get K and M upon. I'll try again. They want to get paid the thousand dollars for the original call for the sprinkler in the um, well, that was a better thing. in the vestibule. Where but I will that? try and get them. Yeah, I, I don't think that we'll receive payment by then. I mean, it usually takes us longer than two weeks to get paid. So. But is that fixed? That's been that's been repaired. No, it hasn't no. been repaired. We actually, and I'm waiting. I'm, I'm there waiting. was a service call initially. Um, um, that's yeah. the $1,000 that you guys just approved, and then there'll be a follow-up for the repair call. So when, so that's still out of commission, it'll be a year, right, January? So that, that happened before we did the um, open house. Hmm. It's a pretty quick fix once we can get them paid for their original service call on it. I'm more, I'm more concerned with the fact that we don't have a sprinkler in the main vestibule and we haven't had one for close to a year. So. Well, I know only, it was a. It's who, only between the doors. I realize that. But it's not like in the lobby. I mean, I know where it is. Trust me, I know where it is because there's every when you I walk know. in the school, there's a disgusting gaping hole. I'm just trying to clarify for the public that we're just talking <laughs> about the <laughs> <laughs> the, the door of Yeah. So if something it's happens so in that main lot. area. I yeah. mean, there's no fire suppression. Oh, I agree. I agree. Before we turn the sprinkler back on, we want to put a thermal camera on it just to see. Now that we have differential between the. the the two areas. We've been hearing about the thermal camera for yeah, so well, six it's months, now cold. I think, right? Yeah, so it's now cold. We can see it. 
Right. So we went out. Guy, right? So we went out there. Yeah, no, we went out there last week, and I'm waiting to hear back from oh, him. Did. But yeah, um, Gary Galano, he's on our commissioning group of building envelope uh, <laughs> architect, and we talked to Joe a little bit about it as well. And um, talking with Gary, the first question was, okay, is the thermal camera, and we'll bring it up if we have to. The first thing we want to do is we want to ensure um, that there's a there's structural steel directly above the set of doors. And there's a wall that was built. It was sprayed um, with insulation in between uh, the studs and the wall. The one, the one thing we couldn't see in a photograph um, of it was whether the flutes in the deck, have you ever seen the, the steel decking? It's, it's corrugated, and the question is, are those, were those also insulated as well? That's one thing we couldn't tell. So Gary's gonna go out there, uh, he's meeting Phil Diana um, to, um, with a dowel to, um, we're able to, we'll be able to see if it's actually insulated, if there's resistance to the dowel. It's about uh, a foot and a half behind a steel beam that we can't see it. There's a soffit in the steel beam. We can't see it physically unless we take out the gypsum board soffit. So I said, well, the first thing we had to do, because when we were up there, air was flowing. There was a f flow of air coming into there. Um, very cold. And, and Joe, we were out there, and it, it was pretty distinct. So the question is, do, do we go above into these flutes above the steel beam and actually insulate those? Um, you, know, you know, one would say, well, why wouldn't you do those at the same time? Perfectly good explanation, but if it hadn't been done, and even just a couple of those flutes, the soffit on the outside of the doors is, is perforated, so that air would be able to come up into that soffit and go. flow right into that area if they're not insulated. So said, the first thing, let's let's do the simple test to see if those are actually insulated first. I'm wait, I'm just waiting to hear back from him. He didn't fall up with me right afterwards, but um, that's the first test. So that means he went in that area with the thermal camera. Is no, he didn't use the thermal camera because if it's if it if there's there has to be a differential in temperature for the for the camera to see it. You can see if it's cold and measure the cold, but actually seeing a, a, a delta. Uh, and looking at the details, we pulled the details out again. We, we called Joe and kind of looked at all the construction through there, looked at the photographs. So we'll, be, before we get into that, let's just check if those flutes are actually insulated. Because if not, that's a, that's a pretty straightforward uh, uh, solution, we think. We just spray them. Yeah, you can spray them, it's just getting access to them. It's mm -hmm. just they're, they're, they're up and they're kind of hidden um, in those, so. Um, so if they are insulated, then your like next step right. is the cameras? Yeah, if they're insulated, um, I think we looked at one other location. We were, we were trying to look at other potential areas because it's not gonna be coming from the roof. The roof has got inches and inches of insulation, brand new roof, so it would be coming from up top. <clears throat> Obviously not gonna come from the inside of the building. Uh, so we're trying to look where else could it be. I think we wondered maybe from the, the media centers right next to it. Um, but these flutes seem to be the most obvious uh, location for that. The side to the administration wing, that's a CMU, um, the ground face block going all the way through. So wouldn't we coming through there? Um, we don't think. Um, possibly the one other option um, is along that wall, if there's an expansion joint through there, could it be coming through that joint and down into that space? We don't think it's likely, but just trying to find potential uh, locations for air infiltration. Uh, but we think the perforated soffit and the flutes, that seems to be the most likely. But if, and if Phil was here, he was supposed to be out there with him, I don't know. How. And that's the only so, spot in the building where that could happen. Is there another entrance or another doorway that that well, is? The, yeah. the other side, there are multiple vestibules. I mean, we had a, a similar but different problem in the other vestibule in that the, at some point during the testing of the systems, the heater hadn't been turned on in that vestibule. So that I, was a valve issue. Those are their shutoff valves right. inside the building that were shut off. <coughs> that no way Phil, Phil's people couldn't shut them off because we couldn't even find them. Yeah, no. they're they're up above, okay. and, and the, the contractor said, "Hey, there's where they're at." They wouldn't have shut those off, so those were shut off on the bus drop-off side. It was cool over there, but that was a, because the valves weren't open mm -hmm. in that location. So, but the proposal ultimately is just put a vent, a passive vent, all the way across that soffit and allow that heat to kind of get up into that space. In addition, if we have to insulate it, I think if, if that's the case and we insulate it, that should handle that issue because that, that air was. That? Will we do that in all of the vestibules then? Because we could check them all. I mean, it, that was the only one indicated, but it, it 
it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to check the other ones. Just, yeah. I mean, it's a simple inspection. Well, I, I think even just putting a recording thermometer up and yeah. sealing of all those things will let us know if there's any kind of dangerous differential between the two. I think it should be done to avoid similar yeah. water damage. The other, the other <coughs> vestibules are on different um, sides of the building. Was this one? What side is this? Is this one more the field likely side. to be colder? It's on the east side. Because of wind or whatever? East side, uh, no. Probably not. Yeah. No. Good thought. Probably a similar condition on all these. I mean, there, there are different conditions in terms of how they're constructed with all of these. Oh, they are? Okay. Yeah, this is the one that I would actually think would be least likely to have any sort of <laughs> Good. leak from the outside. <laughs> it, it's hard to track down. We did go back through the construction photographs. We do see that you know the, the proper spray foam as insulation was placed where it was. Um, the only thing that we don't know is whether there's some kind of a leak from over near the media center. But again, thermal imaging might might show that up. Oh, we need to wrap this up. Now that we have the cold air there, we we can uh, verify things. All right. So um, next step is to check that. Physical, there's a physical. Uh, yeah, so as I hear, hear back from from <coughs> my colleague on that, if he if, if he says, yeah, we we it, it appears that there is insulation there, then it's going to be okay. What's you know what other conditions are there, and then we can um, try to get we'll get the, uh, the the camera out there and, and making sure making sure the conditions will show that too. It, it's a matter of having that differential um, to show it. Okay. All right. Um, I want to jump down to the ceramic tile joints. We, um, what are we doing with that? Those are all being remedied over Christmas break. Did we vote on a cost for that? Is there a cost for that? Um, I rejected their cost for it and told them it was a warranty item. So okay, I'm waiting for them. To okay, back. good. I like that. I didn't feel like it. It would be easier on me. But. So that those will be done in the the break too. Regardless of. The cost <coughs> back and forth. It'll be a done over Christmas break. Okay. Somehow they got that back down to a, I guess you'd say a reasonable level because they no longer have the chair over it or the cone yeah, it feels over it. Nice did that. Just How much time do you spend in school? <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot, but it's, they're glaring. It's right in the middle of the hallway. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't miss see. this, Joe. When you, we, we were going to the auditorium, we were going to the cafeteria. That's There was literally, the two tiles were yeah. up like this. Like you can't miss, and then they had a, a, a chair over it with a cone. So, <laughs> I mean, you have to be pretty uh, blind not to, to see that. <laughs> You'll see it. You don't spend enough time. Right. Yeah. Yes. You'll right, see right, it. Right. Isn't there right. a concert this week? I, I've see already it. been there. Oh. I saw the holiday concert. The uh, oh. I think there's one coming up. And this you week. didn't see it. I guess oh. I wasn't looking. <laughs> <laughs> did they have those lights all the way? Did they have the lights all the way down in the in the? Yeah. Let me tell you about those lights. When do you want to hear about those? Right now. Because that rubber that the lights are installed on is a total tripping hazard. It's not level. So when you're coming in off of the mm -hmm. off of the rows yep. and going in, like into the row, mm -hmm. your your foot hits. So number one, how easily are those things going to end up being knocked out of place, or how many people are actually going to tr trip? Oh. So they're not flush. Hmm. Those no, rubber no, tracks not, are not the, flush. With the flush with the floor, flush. The, no, we knew they they weren't going to be flush. They're not meant to be flush with. There's going to be issues. I'm there's, I mean, there's a profile, a certain profile. It is a smooth profile. It's not an abrupt profile, but it is a profile to fit with a carpet, with with that condition. Yes. But that's the light. I mean, the light's got a profile to it, unless you check it out. Yeah, I thought it looked good. They look. They look. Good. They do. They look good. Going they look good. Going to the rough. Yeah, but if like, your foot hits that, like you're go, you're going forward. You, I yeah, mean, it's I mean, from which direction? From the seats from, or from the from the aisle going from in? From the into aisle the seats. going in. Yeah. I don't know because it's, it's carpet. The, the aisles are carpeted, it's so it's actually it's going up. down. It's, it's, it's going up. Down. Yeah, it's not. They're, they look a, nice. They do. Profile. They look nice. Yeah. Um, and then was the intent? Did they not have to go all the way <laughs> to the first row? Because there's a there's a not on the first start, row. Yeah. The, yeah, it starts at row two. <laughs> it starts like a couple rows back. Yeah. Just thought that was I odd. See where it... Yeah, take a look. Right. 
<laughs> I did see that, but I thought maybe that was more like there was a purpose. Or yeah. Well, yeah. Well, maybe there is, but that's what we were oh, like. Oh, you know what? Well, they wouldn't be in the row where you were able to put the wheel the chairs because then I would assume maybe that's. So I know some of those are removed, and there's. But I was in. I think some of the rows on the sides on come out farther. Well, technically, I was in row three. On the sides. Mm -hmm. So we would have. They probably start them at the same location. But I, I don't think I mean, it also was just keep in mind the, the yeah. purpose for these is just elimination. So no, I know what the purpose yeah, yeah. was, yeah. but at the same time, I mean, if you're not paying attention, yeah, like trip, but somebody could get hurt, and then we'll really be in trouble. All right, moving along. Gym floor. <laughs> um, where are we at with the gym floor replacement for the um, going up the bid? So. Um, I released the field report to you guys. Did you release that to the rest of the committee? Yeah. Okay, are there any questions on that? So ju just a few things that I saw. So there was a, a mold smell when the plugs were pulled out. So that's yes. not in our, our minds. It was recognized that there was a moldy smell. Yeah, and I don't typically smell that that well. And as soon as I took the plugs out, I was like, oh, okay, that's where this But you were there, Joe? I took the plugs out. Yeah. You did? Oh. Those those little round things yeah. that are half out. So right? little show and tell here. No, not I don't think so. Show oh. these are the new ones. Oh. That's it. That's all it took. Yeah. So, that one you could see it. And then just in terms of there's a comment that oh, it wasn't as that's the smell. It's the smell. Do I have a mold allergy? I do too. I do too, but I think that that's that is the that's the smell. Put it on my skin and see if I break it. No, we're good. No, I get out. We'll bypass you. Does anybody down there want to take a So the original system is just wood on top of the metal steel toxic torque. The condition of the concrete that that steel sleeper is on is looks to be pretty rough from the areas that we looked at. I don't know whether that confirms with what you saw in the field carry. The, the issue with that is it's not a typical system that we would see nowadays, and that system is a lot thinner. In other words, it's about an inch to an inch and an eighth of an inch. Any modern system for a gym floor like this is going to be about one and three quarters of an inch. That may not seem like a big deal, but what it does is it affects the thresholds that are all around the gym. It also affects the height of the wall panels that are going to probably have to be moved, or we'll have to figure out some way of, of adjusting the base on those. Well, we what about the, the bleachers? The, the bleachers will need to be taken out and reinstalled or you know as Carrie was suggesting maybe those that section could be preserved but if you have a height differential between the two yeah, it's it's it seems a little tricky there. we have looked to see if there are any other thinner systems we managed to find one that was about an inch and a half still not going to match the original system when we hired that company to assess the floors before we decided whether we were going to repair or replace they did not drill like this no, it's based on a visual, I guess, hindsight. Thank you. Can you just say it? Yeah. Can you just say it? Yeah. Said, I told you so. <laughs> Let the record show. I told well, you so. I, gotta be honest with you. I would have thought, and, and yeah. what do I know? Right. But I agree with Michelle. I would have thought we the done. person who did the evaluation of the original floor would have drilled some cores and evaluated the sub base <clears throat> and everything else. I think that's a pretty crappy job of evaluating yeah. the floor and giving us the Four information cents. that we needed yeah. Yeah. to decide at the time whether or not we wanted to keep the floor or not. I think that's, that's pretty lousy. That. But yeah. whoever the inspector was, that's pretty lousy. It wasn't an inspector, it was, it was a, a contractor, contractor. that, that said, bid, the, bid, the, bid the installation of the original, of the replacement floor. And the question w was posed to them: Can you? What's the call? Like, can it be saved? Is it that contract, or the one where we talking to schools? We are lay people making these decisions. Yeah. We need the professionals in the room to get a hold of the correct people, whether it's a contractor or a whoever it might be, to give us the information we needed. And if that's all it took to decide that there's yeah. mold in the bottom of that, we would have proceeded with the new floor. To be we would have made different decisions, I'm sure. I, I think that was not a great job in getting. Well, you're talking way back. Dave, so I understand you're talking way back when we first when, when we decided when we decided okay, to V. Just trying to understand floor. which one yeah. you're talking about. When we decided awesome. to V the floor. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. And, right. and we were told that this floor had only been Understood. reconditioned twice mm -hmm. or three times in 50 years, and it all was good. 
we got some bad information to Don't make that decision. That. You guys looked to see if there, it needed to be abated under the floor. Yeah, um, that was that was Langen that did that, right? I don't think that there was any indication that there was some, sub, like a, uh, a moisture. I remember, I remember there was, yeah, I remember the opposite. Yeah, I remember people probably said the floor was great, it, like, mm -hmm. like, my guess. like Madison Square Garden great. Yeah, that was the condition. Lab but once there's more, there's always more. I mean, it, it, it looks so, great now on the top. So that's the so different width, too. Yeah. yeah, so you can see this is the actual yeah. width of the original wood. Um, it's thicker, which is good. Probably hasn't been refinished at all, except for this last round. Um, now you go with more of the three-quarter inch, just like this. This, though, is currently held on metal sleepers, so there's indentations, which you can't see in, this, in these particular pieces actually indentations to hold these things. So they're literally metal sleepers that are holding them. Um, How big were those, Joe? So the entire system is not much deeper than that. It's probably like that. So they're pretty thin sleepers. Yeah, about one. Yeah. Can you no. get a thinner profile sleeper to make up the difference between the thicker wood? Not really, Joe. The, the reason being is a modern resilient floor, you have some sort of a layer like this. Now, whether they're pads, like this, or whether it's a rubber sheet, which is probably what we would recommend. Then you typically have a layer of plywood. The reason for that is so that you have some stability uh -huh. back and forth, and yeah. then you put this layer on top of this. Oh, that's so like this this is a this is a pretty typical sandwich for a gym gym floor of the ones that you guys would be used to playing on. So by doing that, then we change the whole. By doing that, you change the level. Now it's not the end of the world. Um, but it is a little more complicated in terms of what you do with the bleachers, in terms of how the thresholds of the doors work so that they remain accessible, in terms of the height of the gym pads, in terms of how the base interacts with that gym pads. All those are, are variables that seem minor but are, are tricky. So you can't go with a thinner piece of ply, sort of like this three quarter inch or this inch, whatever it is? Yeah, we've asked all the manufacturers that we've dealt with on that. Um, we have four in our spec that we released to you. We've talked with those, we've talked with others. There's one that can do a system that's like a quarter inch shallower. Is that the one with the, it's like a track inside the, inside the um, substrate? It's a track inside the substrate and frankly, we're not sure that it would give you the same kind of resiliency that you know, your typical Floor is it possible to grind down the, the what, what is the floor? But what's beneath the concrete. concrete? Is it possible to, to grind that down? How, how much room do you need to pick up? It, well, and the answer, of course, is anything is possible. No, um, but, but You'd be we're, 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 we're aware of you know this needing to be done on, on a budget and, and correctly. Yes, the, the short answer is in our spec. Also, we call for it being ground level and smooth per manufacturer's direction. So the the demo would be taking those pieces of steel out, yeah. you know, taking a terrazzo machine or whatever it was to try and take all that stuff down. Could you get three quarters of an inch? We're not really sure how deep that slab is. Is it just a rat slab that's, you know, like two or three inches deep? Probably. So if you go down a little bit further, are you compromising then the substrate the whole thing is sitting on? Oh, dear. So if this is the source of the water that odor, which is certainly smells like it. Um, is that a like a remediation or what is that can or once you, you remove that it it will be you plan on removing that layer, that base, right? So it's gonna be the it should be gone. What we know about the existing system is that there's bituminous tar there. There's felt paper on top of that, um, which should have been a reasonable water barrier. You know, this was back in 1960, so who knows what's happened since then. If there is some kind of a water reservoir or moisture reservoir in there, the process of taking the entire floor off, grinding it, and putting a new vapor barrier down as, as specified by every manufacturer, they require a vapor barrier under these things. That should take care of the situation. And that's what you're planning on doing. That's what we're planning on doing. And then the other question I have is about the, the patched areas, um, which we knew we had to patch certain areas, but those are already failing 
I saw that when I when I went out there. Some of the some of the gaps between there are such as that I could get a screwdriver all the way down to the concrete in there. So it was another method of actually measuring the depth of the system, which was good for me, but bad for you guys. And is that something that we could get back in some type of warranty for that portion? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, I think that's probably more of a Chuck and a state question. I, I think that'd be tough. Uh, honestly, Margo, that's an existing floor. I know um, they went back multiple times repairing those um, in those areas. Um, given that, I, I guess the question is how do we warranty? What, what's the conditions of the warranty? Um, you know, we're talking, we're, we're, we're discussing the, the conditions underneath the floor, 50 year old floor. I mean, we know, but we don't know, you know, how that's performing now versus a newer system. So, I guess no matter how do you really warranty it and what's the condition, that, that's the only question. I mean, I guess that's just if the, if the contractor said we can fix this floor and we'll even patch the spot that's in bad shape and it'll be fine. Yeah. And then even the part they patched didn't work. And, and I think in, in hindsight, we're all going, okay, we should just go with a new floor. Of course, that's, that's uh, obvious. But anytime we elect to go with this uh, reconditioning of, of a floor in this manner, there's just I think a certain level of it's an existing floor. There, it's not a new floor, so they're I'll say you're giving not necessarily giving up warranty, but you're it's not it's again it's just not a new system. So um, the other the only other thing I would add to that, Chuck and Mike, is that um, at the time that the patches were done, we didn't know that this floor was going to you know, move to, you know, sometimes a quarter to a half an inch break in between these things. In other words, as it was patched, had that whole system held together the way that we anticipated that it would, probably those patches would have been fine also. So I think it was consistent with the, the intent to try to, to fix it. Do all those little plugs that they put in close to the, like, the sides of the room, those tiny little round plugs, when we went to go visit to see, to see the separation of the, um, the floor, it seemed like there were so many of them that were, they were out, they were gone. So there was even like what they had put in, the, those were, I mean, there's divots. So there's no, there was no warranty on any of that stuff. I know, I haven't looked well, that, at that specific condition. So. Those were probably, uh, those looked like they were been there for a long time. How do you figure? I don't know what they refinished the floor. They refinished the floor. But well, you can see the screw below. Yeah. And they looked like they'd been there for a while. They plugged where a screw had been. Yeah. I don't know. But we well, don't know the damage yet because we, we have to not put it out to bid. Well, that's the next step. That's where I was going to work. That's where I was going next is what do we do now? Right. So, I mean, our recommendation, given what we've seen, I don't think that you're going to get a system that's the original depth that's going to perform the way that you guys need it to for the next 50 years, which is hopefully how, how long it'll last. We suggest going with a more standard floor like that. We have a lot of different options. I think we'll get a lot of competition on the pit. We can solve the problem with the thresholds. We can solve the problem in terms of the wall pads. Just as an FYI, that might mean taking the wall pads down and reinstalling them. I understand that's an extra cost. There may be something else that we can do with the base, but we're going to could be new base there. there. I think we may be able to reuse the existing. It goes all around both of the gyms, and so I think if, if there's a way to carefully uninstall it or reinstall it, maybe you do it. It's probably up to the contractor. How do you adjust the height of the baskets? <clears throat> The height, of the, the height of the baskets, all those are have adjustments actually okay. on, the, on the thing, so that, that's not as difficult. Yeah, um, might just be great for you. <laughs> a couple of things that we would need to feel comfortable to go to bid is making sure that everybody has had their eyes on the lines, the layouts, and that we have some kind of form of sign-off on that. Yeah, that was difficult last time. Yep, yeah. okay. And what, how are you going to handle the tri um, transitions? What is, is this going to be a reducer, or what, how does that work? This yeah, we have we have to think about it. I mean, each of the each of the conditions is different, right? We you have the doors to the outside; those have to be handicapped accessible. Um, you have the doors to the corridors, and these are these are both set areas. So we have to figure out how we moderate those, and sometimes it'll be with a threshold. Sometimes we may be able to recess the threshold into the gym side and have enough of a bevel 
that it, it meets handicapped accessibility before it meets the hall, the corridor. Those are those are all kinds of fussy little things that we have to we have to be able to figure out. We don't think it's impossible. It's just going to be fussy, and it may require sort of custom made thresholds. But I, I'd be interested in seeing part of that detail before signing off on the striping and everything else. It's all part of the presentation of the package to the public. Yeah. And it's ergonomics and functionality, making sure there isn't a tripping hazard, as Michelle had indicated. That, that, that was not my takeaway from the lighting system, but this would present a, a, a different issue in my mind. Yeah, basically for ADA, you have to have a, a maximum of a half inch difference between the two sides of the floor. You can moderate some of that with a bevel, with kind of a little chamfer on it. Um, you can also ramp for portions of it, and that's probably what we would wind up choosing is, is to ramp for a, for a small portion of that. And are we talking about the auxiliary gym as well? Yep. Yeah. Same is that something that can be discussed in terms of whether or not that needs to be done? Well, I think it's, it's up to you guys as to how you bid it. it. We're it does it? Delineate well, we the scope know. of it, and then you guys can bid both of them as an alternate. Then take, you know, Did you drill in there, Jeff? What's that? Did you drill in the exit? There was no real way to drill in there without being pretty invasive. Yeah, uh, we didn't want to. Yeah, they we can do by bleacher. Because if it carried through yeah. in there, we'd obviously want to do it. But if there wasn't evidence of it, maybe. My we guess is it's longer. exactly the same system. I don't, I don't see that it would be different in there. Then again, I have to explain. But does it, yeah. does it smell in there? Like. I don't know. I would think it would be the same. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole area. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> How could you? But, but we could price combined just the large gym. Yeah. yeah. And from a, from a, from a, from a, I guess a half full type, this is going to give us a better price than we would have gotten had we gone out to bid with the rest of the project. Yeah. It's going to be more money. Oh, no, better. How are we going to, um, now, how, how do you say if you got to worry about the wall pads and the doors? Yeah. If we had to do all that with our initial package, we would have paid a, a premium. I don't know where you're getting that from. Yeah, I'm not so sure you're in line for the beat. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that we have much more information about the original floor right now. This was part of our discussion when we value yeah. engineered everything. That if you if you put it out afterwards, then you'll get a better price. This is like year. This but is way the, later. The, the the problem is the other things that are affected by right. it because of the floor, the, the bleachers, the uh, wall pads, the, the wall doors, pads, moldings, which always different. would have been the case though. We right. would have had to replace right. those. Yeah. yeah, at that time. But we've already replaced them. We've already them. replaced them. Oh, okay. Right. In terms of redoing what, so this what, concern, money. what concerns me is is the bleachers, because they're going to have to be uninstalled and reinstalled. I, I think to do anything short of that, you're going to regret it later down the road if you try yeah. to cut and patch around this. Yeah, we already took a risk. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's, we, have to, it, and now we're we have to be uh, get aware out of that cost would be there. Yes, that would definitely. That was not. I think the, the, the last estimates. estimate that I no, gave you no, guys on I'm that sure did not include removing the There's some we can match up to the floor. Do you include moving those baskets? I keep saying this. Uh, I hate Nobody dead has horse. given me a plan on moving of the baskets. Can, can we at least cares. get a number and an idea? And yeah, we contacted, idea to we contacted to Draper, the installer who originally looked at it. They're looking at it. They said that, you know, based on what they saw, they didn't see any reason why they couldn't be moved back the amount that we were looking at. Well, I think that would be a good idea. All right, so we need to get the documents together in order to go to bid. Uh, we want to go to bid in January, if, if possible, February at the latest, right? Yeah. Get them in line. So what do we do? Well, yeah, let's stop on that. Well, so I would, I would ask for you guys' support in going with something like this as opposed to trying to do some other kind of floor that we go ahead and and deal with the fact that it's higher than the original floor. Mm -hmm. I need you guys to sign up and say yes, the lines as we've given you are correct. Mm -hmm. We're good with that. Once we have those two pieces, we can really spit documents. Okay. So, um, it makes sense to me, I don't know, the committee, if, you know, if the other alternative options that are thinner still require a lot of reading remediation, to the other structures in the building, we might as well go with the most common. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that because we'll have more options and it might be less expensive. Right. But I mean, that's 
I don't know if that's how everybody else feels. This is the best performing floor that you'll get. Right yeah. Let's see what's going on. All right, so we, we've got to get a meeting together for those lines. And that's with the stakeholders. Mike, we have to get a meeting together for the lining, for the line scraping, with uh, all the everybody that's involved. So that we got to be filled in. Uh, um, the gym teachers, yeah. I would think, need to be involved in that. Phil Tana, Phil Kass, the gym teachers, and the uh, AD. AD, you know, any of the community groups that are using it that have, have input on it. And really, the only complaint we've heard is, is the, the half court basketball lines. The, red, the, the pickleball, the volleyball, that's all good. But, but I'll verify with Yeah, I would ask when you get those stakeholders At the same time, since again, we have a second yeah. bite at the apple, let's make absolutely yeah. sure that we have everything in place. It's kind of hard. Second bite at the apple. That's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I'll work second with you, Mike. Can we do that before the, uh, the break? Yeah, legal expression. Next week or two? All right, sure. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> I just wanted before you leave. Right now, I'm flying there. Okay. Um, at our last executive session, we had our last meeting. We had an executive session. Uh, we do have a proposal for the uh, third part review, and unfortunately, I did not bring a copy of that proposal. But I think I said it to everybody. Yeah, we got. Um, how much was that? Seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. And what's the name of the company? Uh, it's Jack Butkus, who works for Arcadis. Okay. I'm going to entertain a motion to approve that um, proposal. Make a motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Wait, do we have to add this to the agenda first, or no? It's on the agenda. It's on, it's on the agenda. <coughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. So what he's going to do is he's going to review the change order tabulation that Colliers has provided, uh, evaluate the cost premium allocations to the omissions, tabulate the E&L costs overall in comparison to the standard of care that's in the contract, and give us an opinion. Okay? Yep. Okay. Thank you. So I'll get him going on that. Great. Nice. All right. Chuck, you have anything else? No, we already talked about the reconciliation. Um, I think that went well. And um, as soon as I find out what our results are from the best of you, I'll forward that to you. And then uh, figure out what the next steps are with that, if, if that is in fact, uh, depends on the condition. And well, no changes in our balance right now. No, since the last report. No, no, we were pretty pretty close. It was, I think, still around two hundred twenty-five. But we could be getting a hit on the cost of the floor. Well, that's, you've you've what was it about? Two twenty-five. Yeah, it was. You've encumbered uh, some expenses for the new gymnasium floor, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah let me just bring that up. It was three hundred something on there. I think. There it is, right here. I got it open. So. Oh, we don't have a meeting. Just we're on one. On one. What happens so we can't vote no, on it. We can't vote on it. No, we just don't think that's the way to vote. Um, for those, yeah, we didn't cover a pretty good amount of money. Well, $225,000 isn't going to give us a track now, now, is it? And if we encumbered 300 and now we have added costs for removal of bleachers and whatever else, we don't get Three hundred thirty thousand. We had put in for the um, for the floor. <clears throat> yeah, we encumbered penny. That was coming out of the balance. We that was a, a, a penny issue. And our <clears throat> after that, yeah, two twenty five is where we're at. That's after the three three thirties are taken out. So so and the two twenty five is going to be. What we might have to do other things if we if we can keep that 225. That is correct. If we come in within the 330 or thereabouts, yes. What about the 24 grand, whatever it was that we just um, okay to have stair rails put in? Um, let's see what do I have that queued up here. 
center hand railings, I had 20,000 encumbered against that. So I already, that came out that, that I'd be taking another four, 4,000 there. Yeah, but it might come in less because. Yeah, we encumbered 20,000 against that. If you don't watch them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go, I'll watch them. <laughs> Nothing will get past. Okay. All right, um, moving on. Anything else? It might be me watching them. Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I surveyed the crew for your. Uh, Carrie? Any updates you need to give us? I don't want some obligation. Um, but I might be begging to get get out of the house by then. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go take a ride. <laughs> yeah. Go do some work. Uh, no, nothing else to report. Okay. All right, so I think our, you know, next meeting, next two, in two weeks, that's just before Christmas, so I don't think anybody wants to meet. So we'll, we'll uh, schedule in January 7th, which is the... I'll also be on vacation. Me too. Me too. Is that right? Oh, no quarrel. All right, then. We'll be Where TBD. TBD on that, because... Uh, yeah, you need a but in the meantime, we should we should get I'm going to sleep. Yeah, let's get what we need. Oh, gym floors. Nice. Yeah. So should we come back? We say just go. Snowmobile exactly. Snowmobile. Maybe we'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we don't have a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just I'll, enter, I'll if any public likes to make comments. I know some people. No public no, here. Man. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll uh, end the meeting. Make a motion to adjourn. Well, there's no meeting. Oh, right. We don't. Oh, there. Well, no kids. We can just leave. We'll leave yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys, the trip is terminated. The meeting. Yeah. 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 Happy Go Christmas, down. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're Have seeing a happy you, Jackson. Have a happy New Year. Have a The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com.